Hello, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, author of Disaster Preparedness for EMP Attacks and Solar Storms. Today I want to talk about one specific topic of Faraday cages. I often see on the internet that people make Faraday cages out of chicken wire, and a lot of times they claim that it works just as well as, let's say, using aluminum foil. So I wanted to put that to the test and see the results. Um, so what I did is I created two boxes, both of them out of uh, wooden crates. I wrapped one with aluminum foil, and I left the top open. And the second one I wrapped with one inch chicken wire, all the way around, again, with, with the top left open. Now the reason I left the top open for now is I'm going to put a portable spectrum analyzer inside of the Faraday cage so that I can make the measurement of what uh, RF energy is received. So what I'll do is I'll first take an open air measurement, that's with no box at all, and then I'll put the spectrum analyzer inside the Faraday cage. I'll put a cover over the top, over the open side, so that it's fully enclosed and I'll retake the measurement. And what I'd like to do is compare the two results, one with aluminum foil, one with chicken wire, and show you how well they work. All right, now I'll probably just do this for one high frequency. Maybe I'll pick 100 megahertz. So I'll run it at 100 megahertz, and we'll see what the levels do. Uh, and you can infer from that how it would do at even higher frequencies. So my first measurement is just an open air measurement. I place the spectrum analyzer on a chair, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on a transmitter that will broadcast at 100 megahertz and we'll see what the, the baseline open air value will be. Now I've set the spectrum analyzer to catch the peak value that it detected so we'll go ahead and zoom in and see what we got here. So you can see the peak show up and it looks like it's minus 60.5 dBm. So that's our baseline measurement, minus 60, we'll just call it minus 60 dBm um, just to use as our baseline. Next we'll go ahead and place the spectrum analyzer inside of, uh, let's say, the aluminum foil Faraday cage and we'll see how what level it reads then uh, while it's actually enclosed in the Faraday cage. It will be something lower than that minus 60.5 dBm. Alright, so what I've done is I've placed the spectrum analyzer inside of the aluminum foil wrapped box. I've created just a little cover with aluminum foil and placed it over the face of that open box. And so that's what we have set up there. Now once again, I'll go ahead and turn on the transmitter, then we'll open it up and see what level we get. Alright, I turned on the transmitter briefly. The spectrum analyzer should have captured the level. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what it looks like. Now, it so happens that the box with aluminum foil provides at least 50 dB of protection depending on what frequency you're at. And if you look at the noise floor here, the noise floor is about minus 100 dBm. So again, remember we had about minus 60 dBm uh, in open air. So it only gave us about 40 dB of dynamic range that we could see and the aluminum foil box provided more than 40 dB of shielding. Um, so the signal completely disappeared. The RF energy was transmitted, but it was never received well enough that we could see it rise up above the noise floor. So that, that Faraday cage did as we expected. It provided at least 40 dB of protection, um, which is actually pretty darn good. So now what we'll do is we'll repeat the experiment, but we'll do it with the chicken wire, and we'll see it once again. Does it drop at least 40 dB down into the noise floor? Okay, so for the next measurement, I've placed the spectrum analyzer inside of the chicken wire wrapped box and I've created a cover for the top of it and I stapled it down good. So it's in essence a recreation of the aluminum foil box but using one inch chicken wire. So again, let's turn on the transmitter and let's see what level we receive. Okay, we'll zoom in here. And what you see is that, unlike the aluminum foil box, uh, this one, the signal is still strong enough to rise out of the noise floor. In fact, it rises out all the way up to about minus 80 dBm. So 
remember we were about at minus 60 when we started in the open air. When we put it in the chicken wire box, we end up at about minus 80, which means that it provided about 20 dB of shielding at this frequency of 100 megahertz. Now that's not great. 20 dB is a factor of 10 when you're talking about electric field reduction. So it's certainly better than nothing, um, but it did not perform nearly as well as the aluminum foil box, which actually dropped the signal all the way down into the noise floor. So the summary, I guess, is that you can certainly create Faraday cages out of various materials. You can use fine mesh, which would perform better than this chicken wire, certainly. Or you can use solid conductors, like a galvanized trash can or aluminum foil wrapped box. And what you'll find is that the finer the mesh, or especially if you use a solid conductor, you will get better performance at high frequencies. And I think in the case of an EMP, that becomes especially important. So my recommendation is to not build your Faraday cages out of chicken wire. Um, and I, hopefully this experiment, which is done you know, with some careful measurement values rather than just sort of anecdotally, uh, will prove to you that, that indeed it does make a difference what you make your Faraday cage out of.